Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview here for 2018 in Indiana, Indianapolis. And we are here with Jean Thomas Yee. <laughs> I hope I say it right. And um, we're going to talk about three of his games. Uh, two of them are already done from Kickstarter, and one of them is coming out, I believe. And uh, just what are those games, and uh, a little brief summary of each of them. Perfect. Hi, I'm Jean Thomas from Jab Bro Games. Uh, here are our, our creation. Uh, we did two Kickstarter, one this year's, one last year's, and we hope to launch the third one on this year's or maybe next year's. Awesome. So, uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Uh, let's try with the first one. We, we, we start with Vikingar here. Uh, this is a really easygoing game. There is strategy in it, but it, there is luck also. We know that. You have to let yourself go kill town, kill church, uh, kill some monster that Would this one be kind of like risk or area control or...? No, it's a, it's a race for uh, the completion of quests. So you have eight quests, you have to uh, do the quest there. And every time you, you, you have a complete, not a complete mission, you hop the little dice on it. And when you have three of them done, you can leave from the the hurt from the uh, the, the, the Midgar to the Valhalla, and the Valhalla are at the end of the hurt because the, the hurt is flat. So you have to leave with your Drakkar at the end of the, the world. Awesome! I mean, it looks great, and you can see there's a bunch of different pieces, right? You have all the different ship pieces, and uh, these are little um, outposts for commerce, commerce to get gold. And then this one? And you have the standees for the, the, the monster, the, the encounter that you have to do. And when you, you, it's the strongest thing to do, but you have object in return when you, you, you kill them. So it's a good way to go faster in the game. And all the combat, it's with runes and not with dice. So you have to throw that the was the most interesting aspect of the yeah. game, I think, using runes as combat, throwing them. Right? And depends how they felt on the board, you have different point the calculation on it. And the board itself can be changed. You can actually remake the board however you want to provide more replayability for the game. Uh, you have 30 tiles with the game and you use only 24. Uh, every tiles are ma matching together however you put it on the board. So you throw tiles at the beginning and it will always work together. So you, the, word, the world is completing by turning the tiles like this. Simple. All right, cool. Um, so this is Vikingar, and you can go ahead and pick it up where? For the moment, there is no more. Uh, we are planning to, we sold all the 2,500 board that we print. Uh, right now, we are working on the extension, and we maybe do a kickstart with the extension and the reprint at the same time. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about another one then. How about 40 Thieves? 40 Thieves, we just run the campaign uh, in March. Uh, 40 Thief, it's a push your luck strategy memory game. Um, people say, oh no, memory game, but it's not at all only a memory game. You have to manage, you have cards in your, uh, it's tiles that you have in your hand, and you can switch tiles on the board, you have to remember which tiles, but the, the symbols give you idea of what you, it's hide under. So you have here, it's a moon, and it's green. So moon are generally going to have a specific type of tile underneath so it's it. it's moon or green tile. This is a green tile. So you have an idea of what you have under, but it's not a moon. The, the goal is to do to flip four cards like this, and you have to complete a combination to steal Take the Take the sapphire, gem, right? The gem. Whoever has the most of them at the end of the game is going to be the winner, right? Yeah. And this is not work because it, there is an evil eyes there, so it's not a good combination. So you take an evil eyes token because you didn't steal the sapphire there. So this is like a penalty, basically, yeah, you'd be yeah, taking. Yeah. Minus one at the end of the game. This is like a pretty quick game, right? So you can play over and over again pretty... It's 30 minutes game, kind of. You can play two to four players. Uh, at two players, it's really one and the other. You have to... It's really strategic at two players. Four players, the turn it's a little bit longer so you never know how the board will be at the and end it can of be it. rearranged differently yeah, so there's a little more luck involved i would imagine maybe on the on four players it's a little bit more luck but not that much 
Awesome, that looks great. I saw it on Kickstarter and it looked interesting as well. I'm excited to try and play it myself. I'd like to sit down and actually try this one out. I like the idea of combinations to take the gems and the strategy of moving the pieces around and trying to take control of those different sets. I think is a really cool idea. And now we are just to publish the game. So we are working on the component. We receive samples from the, the manufacturer and now we will go, we will say the go really soon in the next weeks. And we hope to ship the, in November, as we say in the, the Kickstarter, it's still possible. So we are keep a good pace to, to, to ship it in November. Now, is this one actually able to be purchased right now, or we have to wait? Do we have to wait? Uh, you maybe. I know the backers can get it. They're going to get their game. It's, but the late place it's closed now. So we have few boutique, a few shop in the states that buy the game. Uh, we have no distributor for the moment, but we have uh, we print more that. We are expecting to print more than what we sold on Kickstarter, so maybe the, the, the US... A couple uh, extra ones yeah, yeah, yeah. available. Awesome. And then finally, your last one, which I probably am not going to try and pronounce there, is about uh, France. It's it? Nouvelle France. Uh, Nouvelle France is the colony, French colony in, in Quebec and all over the US because they went to the, how you say, um, New, uh, New, Orleans. New Orleans. So yeah. Nouvelle France was up uh, big as Quebec to New, New Orleans, so really uh, big territory. And Nouvelle France, it's a construction game uh, that we they just won the, the, the jury prize at the Les Journées Ludiques de Québec. Oh, awesome. Uh, and we are looking to launch a Kickstarter when we will find uh, a manufacturer to, to produce the game. Awesome. And this is actually kind of like a Tetris style game, right? It's, it's, you have to pick cards that say which cube you have to, to play. And uh, you have points by putting your, 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 your cube on the, the, the building there. Uh, and you have to have contact with other cube that you pull to have more points. And you have three times that you pick uh, snow. And when you pick snow, you, you have to count the, um, the layer on the years that you are. And you can count the points. So on that building, the middle year will be minus one for all the cube that the, the player that color cube are there. So and on the other uh, building, it's plus one. And on the other, it's plus two. Plus two okay. So you, you have to manage how you will pull your, put your, your cube. And you can bring a cube, uh, uh, take a cube to do minus point to another player. It's cube management with also trying to score the most points you can while placement, right? Yeah, and, and do minus point to other players. How many players is this game? Two to four. Two to four players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these games are, I two think, to two, to, two to six, two to four, two to four? Yeah. And this one's going to be scheduled for Kickstarter uh, when? Maybe on fall. OK, so, we'll see. We'll see some, somewhere on there. Uh, the game, it's, it's ready to produce. Uh, rules are done in French and English. Uh, the just look into that, what, what, what the produce, yeah, right? That's we, one we need, last we, thing. We need code to go on Kickstarter. Th this is the only point we, we need because we don't know how much it will cost to produce. So this is the, the, the point. Now we are working on that. But play tests are finished. Uh, we won the prize. The, 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 the visual are done. Uh, the rules are um, uh, built, so... Of all of them right now, and I mean, I tried a little bit of this one. This one's cool, like rune throwing. This one looks like a really cool, like, memorizing game. But this one over there, that, I like the idea of how you're placing them down to score different points, and it has all the different layers and whatnot. I think that really is going to shine. And especially when you get the components all super nice looking, it's going to even be even better. This is the difficulty. We want to produce beautiful game. This is a prototype. It will be a way better. The cards are better than this one. And this, and is, the, this is the production. Yeah, this is the production. Uh, and the jam also are the production, and it's much better than the other one. And this one, we want to keep that great looking. And this is another defi another challenge for us, because uh, we need to find someone who can do that game. OK, so uh, the last thing is, where can people find out more about your games, more about uh, the things that are coming up, things that have already been? So if they want to know about your Kickstarter, which maybe you know don't have a date right now, but soon, right? So where, where will they go? Jack Bro on Facebook. Uh, you have a Facebook page that you can follow us. We have all news there. We have a, a page, a web page, but it's only in French for the moment. So we will... We will translate. Work. Google Translate. Google Translate is worked. And, and so I think the best way it's on Facebook, on Jack Bro. 
uh, you can link maybe uh, on, uh, under your video. Yeah, yeah, right in the description below, we'll have his uh, thing. But uh, one last question for you now. The secret question. Secret question. Well, what is one thing that you want to do that's different for the board gaming community? Which, what's something that you want to be able to like say that hasn't been done before that you want to do? We all, we want, we are Jack bro. Jack bro, Jack, it's everybody bro for the family. Uh, we want to do game for family and we want to do beautiful piece of art for the family with special, um, like the runes, we never saw that before in a game. And maybe the little pig that you throw on the table, it's an inspiration, uh, the, the German game that you throw pig. And but, you try and get them on the different sides. Yeah, yeah. So you like the unique and, and individualistic mechanics that haven't yeah. been seen before. Right? Yeah, and we want to join the mechanism with the team. We want to have mechanism that go over the team and have a good combination and be part of the team. As this one, we have the Sapphire, we have the memory, but it's not a normal memory game. We are, we are going over that kind of classical mechanic. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jean, as well. I appreciate it. And I've always been excited to see and finally get to see in person here after all these really cool looking games. I'm excited to try them out eventually when I get my prototype copies or my fully finished copies, if everything goes well, right? Yes. Well, all right, man. Thank you guys for watching Unfiltered Gamer Reviews. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie and I'm here today with Matt Ryan from Bezier Games. And today we are talking about... Ultimate Werewolf Legacy, the most epic game to come out at Gen Con. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Ultimate Werewolf, one of my favorite, you know, old time games. Uh, I'm super excited to hear what is new in the Legacy game. Absolutely. So in the Legacy game, it's going to be almost like that same Ultimate Werewolf fe feeling, but it's story driven. So it's going to be really, really fun because every decision you make and every person you vote on is going to have an impact on the rest of the game. Uh, it plays 16 chapters total. Um, the first game is a preface game just to get people used to how the game works. But after that, there's going to be 15 games and every game is going to affect the sequential game. So you have to be really, really uh, mindful of what you're doing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's one that plays in about 15 hours total, and it's it's one of the best games that I have ever seen us put out. Awesome. And who uh, might be like most interested in this game? What ki type of gamers? So anybody who's into social deception is going to be really interested. If you like Ultimate Werewolf, it's right up your alley. But it's also super friendly to people who may not have played Ultimate Werewolf before. The diary is going to guide them through. This beautiful diary we have here is going to guide the players through um, what they're doing and it's going to keep track of the history of the village and what's happening every year. Uh, so it's super friendly because it has red text in there that the moderator reads aloud um, and the black text is for their information. And you're also going to be placing stickers in the book um, which will make sure that you can track your story and see what's going on and what's happening. And you can get a replay pack for $30, which will get you a new diary, and you can play through the game again and with the same group of people, and you're going to get a totally different experience. So pretty much at the end of the 15 or so hours of play, you have this cool kind of takeaway. Absolutely. So you have this at the end to look back at and laugh at all the stories and who lied to you and who ended up winning each game. You guys can reminisce about all the fun that you guys had. Uh, and it looks really nice on your shelf, too, because it looks like a very nice book. It's gold gilded. Um, and it's very, very nice. Awesome. So one thing with the original Ultimate Werewolf is that, you know, you just had the cards and that's it. But I noticed there's some other components to this game too. Could you explain those? Absolutely. So we have some other components that players are going to be able to use. Um, so we have this one's probably my favorite one. Uh, it's a giant roast beef sandwich. So there's a title that will come out in the game and someone will be elected the Earl of Sandwich. And when you're elected the Earl of Sandwich, you get one of these bad boys and you can put it out for the werewolf and prevent somebody from getting eaten. So it's really, really cool because these components will be reused when you play through the game again. And they're really high quality components. So what I'm hearing is that there's also new characters and abilities and how many, how many new things did you add? Um, so we tried to keep it pretty true to Ultimate Werewolf, but we did have to put some new stuff in there. I won't do any spoilers of the things that are going to come out, um, but one of the cool things is you're going to have to decide at a point in the game whether you're going to open Pandora's box or not. 
So if you open Pandora's box, it completely changes everything. But if you don't, you'll just continue to play through. It's one of the things that um, there's new things that'll come out that you'll be super surprised by. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. I just have one more question for you, kind of a, a little bit different question. So uh, Matt, what do you see as you know, the unique contribution or, or vision you have for contributing to the board game community? So our, game, our goal at Bezier Games, uh, we brand ourselves as the new classics. And that's really, really important to us because we want to be those games that you'll put on your shelf and you'll continue to break out for your friends. We don't want to be one of those games you play a couple times and trade away. We want to be those ones that have replayability and the ability to keep them on your shelf and share them with people and still enjoy them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Matt. Uh, it was a great pleasure talking to you. <laughs> yeah. And that was our interview here with Bezier Games at Gen Con. Thank you, guys, and see you guys next time. Hey guys, Michael Wright here from Unfiltered Gamer, and we are currently at Gen Con 2018 in Indiana, Indianapolis. We are here with Chris and Foolish Panda Games. Yeah. Uh, Escape the Fest is your newest card game, and you want to give us a little uh, explanation? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is a game about music festivals. Um, it was kind of birthed from a music festival that happens in Washington State uh, every year called Paradiso. Uh, after my first experience at a rave, I came home and I was sitting down just kind of taking everything in and I thought, you know, I bet you could turn everything that I just experienced into a game. And then I just kind of sat down from there, started writing out everything that happened. Um, this game kind of evolved from that, had a lot of uh, nights where um, I was hanging out with friends, we would share stories about all the crazy things that would happen at music festivals and from there I've never been I, okay. I, I those ones like they scare me all right all these crazy stuff going on EDC and all that. yeah but this looks kind of like that like EDC and all yep, that kind of stuff. that's yeah. the goal yep. that's the goal we want it to be um, we want people to see it immediately and think things like EDC Paradiso um, Tomorrowland like all the colors just vomiting at you you know uncontrollably like lights blinding and so it's in a way, it's it's experiencing the chaos of a music festival from the comforts of your couch. <laughs> awesome. So, how many players is it? Uh, when is it likely to hit Kickstarter? Uh, and where yeah. can they go ahead and find your game? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, it's two to six players. Uh, three to six is uh, one style of game, and then there's a two-player variant. Um, you're looking at about. 30 minutes to an hour, roughly. Generally about 10 More minutes players, per player, yeah. exactly. Um, once you get it, it goes pretty fast. Uh, it's got some take that mechanics for everybody. Um, it's, uh, I call it an anti-set collection. Um, you're trying to collect various items to help your friends find the items that they lost. That sounds <laughs> like an actual thing that occurs often. All the time. I can't tell you how many like keys I have lost because I'm not like, even going to assume as to why you might have lost those <laughs> items. I, I, who am I to judge? No, no, no judgment, no judgment. It's uh, there's actually a lot of funny stories with that. Um, when the game originally happened, I had some publisher friends of mine and my father kind of sit me down and go like, "All right, look, you know what you're wanting to do is something reserved for people who a already have money." and B, just want to make one game and be done. And like, you want to start a business, you want to actually be successful in life, so you need to figure out how to showcase the actions in the game without being so in your face. So blatant about it, right? Exactly, like, so I had to figure out how to Disney-fy some things. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. And it also opens it up so that more people can play. Exactly. And just because that, it gives the theme of it so the people that have the inside jokes, like for instance, Disney, right? <laughs> You're going to see a lot of those like funny little Disney quirks that only adults know about. Absolutely. And that the kids will still get to enjoy it. Absolutely. You know, like if, if we can all watch Alice in Wonderland, we all kind of know what's happening there. You know, but it's still a magical journey that everyone gets to go on and help each other during. Awesome. So let's escape the fest. And once again, what website and um, when is it going to come out on Kickstarter? All right. Yeah. So it's going to be um, it's coming out next year, 2019. It's going to be on uh, on Kickstarter. Um, we're hoping for round first quarter, um, probably into the second quarter. We want to be around the time that uh, festival season starts, so it's going to be on everybody's mind anyway. Uh, you can check us out at escapethefest.com and you'll check see all of our art and stuff there. And yes, yeah, a lot of fun.
Awesome. Well, I do greatly appreciate you taking the time out to uh, have a little interview with us, and I hope you enjoy Gen Con. Be a little less crazier. And um, also, one last thing. My question is going to be, where, what do you see yourself doing in, in the, for the future of board gaming individually, uniquely for yourself? How are you going to influence gaming? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, one of the things that I really want to do is I... I'm already starting to look at it, meeting young, um, other young uh, game designers who may not want to go through the process of publishing. And I think the direction that I really want to go is finding those unique voices who have, um, who have different games and different themes that we're not seeing right now in the industry. And highlighting those themes, I'm looking for different artists who have different techniques that, you know, is not the... Um, you know that classical painting look but like like as you can see with the art here and you guys will see when you go and check it online um, we're with escape the fest we're trying to do you know we're trying to do art that is um, is lucid is loose is bright um, you know I couldn't be prouder of the artist that I got for this game um, and I'm looking for other artists like that I want games to tell new stories and to look different because when people are holding on to these games like in my opinion you're holding on to a gallery you know like like the mechanics are like the mechanics need to be great but the art needs to be what catches people and as the industry continues to grow the way it is you know we're going to have to remind ourselves and remember that you know, it's not just hobbyists anymore. You know, this, this industry is exploding. You're right. I mean, especially for artwork, any campaign, any, anybody doing Kickstarter campaigns will tell you, you have about 10 seconds to attract those eyes. Absolutely. You want them to go, oh, I want to know more. Whether it's the video, the first 10 seconds of that, or seeing the first two pieces of artwork. Absolutely. It's so important. Absolutely. And that's... That's what I want to do. I want people to see, like, this is this is a game meant to introduce people to the hobby, to say, hey, come join us, become one of us, because it's fun over here. We've got cookies. You know, it's great. It's, uh, and so, like, I, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping people can, can experience this. It's a light strategy game. Like, it's lightweight. It's not a party game, but you can definitely have a lot of fun while playing it and hopefully I can trick you into developing some strategic, you know, um, like formations while you're playing it. And then when you're done with this game, you're like, all right, that was great. Let's play it again. And then over time, you're going to be like, all right, this is a lot of fun, but I know there are other games out there that are going to be more difficult. And that's what I want. Like, and hopefully I'll be publishing those games too. But at the very least, if I can get people's foot in the door, that'll be just as awesome. Awesome, Chris. Well, I appreciate you taking the time here. Absolutely. and I hope you have the rest of the Gen Con um, experience that you're going to want. I mean, I know I will, other than the fact that I am so tired right now. Yeah, but good. anyway, I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. And you have a good one. And Thank we you. look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Bye. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con 2018 board game interview. We are going to be here with Alex and for McClay's Games. We're going to be talking about Sea of Nadia along with something unique and pretty interesting. But let's start off with the game and what you've been developing. I've been noticing it on Facebook a lot and uh, yeah. seeing how it has progressed. So yeah. let's talk about Sea of Nadia. Hey guys, nice to meet you all. Uh, finally I met with Michael here. Michael is just an awesome guy. He does amazing... What am I talking about? The game! What why, is it? Why did I start talking about that? Because I'm just so handsome. I just wanted to say that I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Thank ah! you. Okay. Should oh, we... he's fan gushing. Yeah. So, what is it about? I want to know. How many players is this game? Yeah. Uh, sea of Nadia is a two to four player game. It's all about uh, hunting for treasures, uh, searching for different uh, artifacts, opening different chests. Um, you sabotage your opponents. Uh, so, but each player has their own unique variable pair, player powers, right? And you just started to uh, introduce these guys, right? I didn't see yeah. this last time yeah. when we were at the convention, because we were actually met at Strategicon, because I saw his stuff on Facebook, was interested. Then I saw on, on Facebook and on Strategicon uh, what he was doing. And nice. uh, he, did, he couldn't give me a review copy, and I wondered why. I'm like, I really want to check this game out. And the reason why is because he has some interesting aspects with these cards here that is also introduced with the game of Sea of Nadia. Yep. And uh, what, what is interesting about these cards here? So basically, uh, we collaborate with Simo AR. 
It's a nice uh, augmented real reality application that's available for any phone, which you can download and use to learn any uh, aspect of the game, like how, to, how this card works, or how this card works, or how a specific rule works in a rule book. So there is no more struggle for learning how something works. You just capture it with the phone and it works. Should I and I'm actually going to, what I will do is actually post it on this, editing it in so you'll actually see it fully with my face blocked off basically. Okay. So you'll be seeing it like right here, what's going on. So yeah, basically as you can probably see, uh, the rules are going to be explained to you by a person and not only that, what else is going to be explained. So basically, uh, every card, every compass, and every player um, card which has unique abilities. So you can learn how everything works, including examples, which makes it much easier to understand things. Just imagine if every game has that technology, especially card games, which have a lot of cards, and it's hard to understand how they work. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, there's a lot of games out there that I've wanted to play, but they've either taken to the rules are too ex extensive, taken too long to just explain, all these kind of things. Twilight Imperium is one of those yeah. games. And I sat there, I'm like, I own it. And I still have yet to play the game. And I, I might not ever until somebody literally sits down and shows me. Or maybe they make uh, the cards have some kind of explanation as to how to exactly. play the game in some way. Or even just the player cards. Or, or just simply even adding VR, uh, AR chips to me, even just maybe the box or whatever, just so yeah. that I can get a good idea of how that works. Yep. So basically, you're going to be teaming up um, with this VR to, to not only introduce it to this game, but hopefully other games as well. So the ultimate plan is to. Uh, use this technology for a Sea of Nadia and hopefully see if it really works because it seems awesome But does it really work? I want to see it. I want to see what people think. Do people want this technology in the game or not? I, I think I personally believe they do and if they do I really want to create an application my own application that's gonna uh, Have uh, videos of different games so everyone can join this uh, trend and hopefully everyone uh, Will start learning rules with augmented reality Awesome. So two things then, basically the Sea of Nadia, as well as the AR cards that have just basically introduced today, or yep. at Gen Con, right? Yep. Um, basically, what I want to know now is, when is Sea of Nadia going to be released? Is it on Kickstarter? So it's going to be on Kickstarter in September, uh, around the middle of September, maybe a bit earlier. That's awesome. And is... Uh, so and the idea is basically you're going to be getting a board, you have four different players, you're going to be going around searching for treasure and all that kind of stuff, and it has this like take that aspect in, as well in the yeah. game. These are basically movement spots, right? I, I'm imagining as they, they move around. Yes, exactly. And, and what are these over here? Like chests so, that basically you can open? So these are chests that, which have different amount of coins inside. Sometimes it even has some unique um, artifacts. And also uh, the cool thing about the game is actually dice. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So basically, in a three-player game, for example, uh, the first player of the round rolls dice. Then he or she assigns these dice to each player. So for example, I'm going to take this die from me, give this one to you, oh. and this one to someone. This way, I can decide who gets advantages, who gets disadvantages. But everybody still gets to have something, basically. Of course, yeah. yeah. There is no side which... Uh, basically uh, ruins your turn. You have actions, but... And then the next player gets to roll the dice as well exactly. and do that. But oh, if that's you... awesome. I haven't seen something like that before. Actually, I've never found it anywhere else. It can be a bit of take that. That's true. I'm but... sure somebody in the comment section is going to be like, I know one game that does I that. I... I wish I see that game, actually. Uh, there are cards. You assign cards, give them to people. When you pick a card, you eliminate others from picking it up. So it's not that. This one, you directly decide what to do. And um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I thank you very much for taking the time to show us Sea of Nadia, as well as the AR, which you probably got a little chance to see when we did our magical editing. Um, and also, when we're going to be checking this out on Kickstarter. But uh, finally, uh, not only I have one more question with, for you, but also, uh, where is a good place to see all your stuff that you're going to be doing? Facebook, YouTube, uh, website? So for now, I think the best place would be a Facebook group. Uh, you can find us on uh, uh, Sea of Nadia in the search. It's a group and a page on Facebook. Um, it's easy to find, I guess. Uh, you can ask me any questions there. I'll post it in the link down below so yes. you can go ahead and just click there instantly. 
And my last. Oh, go ahead. Also, I wanted to say how this works. Oh. Also, when when you're assigned a specific dive, for example, you're assigned a skull, this compass activates and it grants you some curse. Or if you're assigned uh, a, a message in a bottle, this compass activates and you take a message in a bottle which has a secret thing inside which you can use in the future. This creates a very cool uh, aspect of uh, unpredictability. I love that. Awesome. Speaking actually of that, what is one thing you want to introduce that's unique to board gaming in the future or currently? Like, what are you trying to produce that's unique and interesting? I mean, we always kind of have the answer already, but I think you go ahead and ask you anyway. So basically, answer the same question about the technology? So basically, the idea is to, uh, to, to, to create a new way of learning board games. Um, so in my opinion and opinion of many other people uh, in an independent survey, uh, people say 30% of people, around 35% of people, don't play board games specifically because of the rules. So, I can see that, yeah, especially the hard ones. And I think that's something that stops the industry from growing, growing much more than it is right now. And I think if we fix that, it, it's kind of a problem. I think it could really help the industry. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time with us, and we look forward to seeing it on Kickstarter. All the information will be down below in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time.